So um, thanks for that intro, uh, Tara. Um, I was uh, pleased a couple of years ago to have the honor to, to uh, address this group before. Um, today, I'm gonna do more of a update on the Flora Project and a little bit less on sort of biodiversity of the Southeast and so forth. And um, I decided to, um, to start by, um, by kind of presenting what, um, what we aren't. Uh, what we don't want to do, what we're trying um, not to do with the southeastern flora. And this is partly based on, on my experience. I was, um, I had the same job in North Carolina for 10 years that Tara has now, the, the chief botanist for the uh, Natural Heritage Program, and went on to uh, work for the Nature Conservancy and NatureServe across the southeast before being in my current position. And I've always been, um, focused really on, on um, making plant identification uh, for conservation purposes with a real conservation goal, um, um, easier and uh, more accessible to, um, to more people. So I'm gonna uh, start with this sort of um, partly joking, but, uh, but also serious, uh, the 21 antitheses of flora writing. And I'm just going to read through them kind of quickly. I think any of you all who have tried to identify plant to identify plants who have used floras are going to relate to a number of these. So the first is the key is the maxim that keys are written by those who don't need them, the expert on a genus for those who won't be able to use them. Two, floras are bound books. They should be as heavy as possible and made with weak bindings. They belong on a table in an herbarium, not in the field. Three, digital products are not real. Four, floras should be written once and not revised. Knowledge is eternal. Did Moses need to go back to the mountain for a new set of stone tablets? Five, floras should be written as dryly as possible. If any touch of humanity or humor appears or love of plants, it degrades the science. Six, no pictures. There's nothing worth showing that can't be described in a minimum of 30 highly technical words. Seven, keep habitat descriptions as general and vague as possible. Woods, roadsides, that way you won't ever be wrong. Eight, make sure to use Latinate words that show you are a well-trained botanist. If a sepal is dark, call it fuscus. If it's grooved, call it vollecular or canaliculate. Nine, glossaries of technical terms should have no pictures. Make definitions technical and circular by reference. Volecular equals characterized by having a volecula. 10, if two genera look superficially similar and are often mistaken for one another, make sure they are keyed far apart from one another. 11, start keys with the most technical characters possible, then proceed to more obvious readily observable characters. 12, in keys, never use vegetative characters that are apparent throughout the growing season when you can and should rely on features of the ephemeral flowers or of the fruits that never set. Plants in sterile condition were never meant to be ID'd. 13, in keys, use terms with general meanings, bracts, like bracts, without explaining their specialized meaning in that genus, bracts absent. How do I know that they're absent if I don't know what I'm looking for? 14, in keys, use relative terms based on your own extensive experience. Plants large and coarse versus plants smaller and more gracile. How much smaller and what does gracile mean? Perhaps the user will eventually acquire that same experience. 15, in keys, use characters that depend on the plant having been dried as an herbarium specimen. 16, in keys, never use characters that are most apparent when the plant is fresh. Plants should only be ID'd from specimens in an herbarium. 17, in keys, use words ambiguously. Sepals reddish brown versus sepals mostly greenish. What does that mostly mean? 18, write family keys using technical and obscure characters, placentation axile versus placentation parietal and often intruded. 19, follow a strict procedure of key to family, key to genus, key to species, key to infraspecies. If someone can't key a plant to the family, see number 18, they don't deserve to know. 20, early in a key, use characters requiring mature fruits. Later in the key, use characters requiring newly opened flowers. Ha, no pain, no gain. 21, keep the riffraff out of botany. No PhD, then why do you think you can use a flora?
So I hope some of those will be um, will fun, be fun, and and uh, you'll be able to re relate to. So um, our principle at the uh, at the flora of the southeastern U.S. project is wild plants to the people. We want to provide tools that will enable um, citizen scientists, um, interested amateurs, uh, as well as professionals to identify plants. So um, we, I've been working on this project um, for about uh, a third of a century, uh, since about 1990. Um, the project is collaborative. Uh, hundreds of individuals have contributed treatments, edits, locations, suggestions. Um, a principle is that it's open access, uh, that it's scientifically rigorous, kept current based on the latest scientific literature and supported by uh, diverse funding. We really want to reinvent the flora as a 21st century tool for biodiversity inventory management and interpretation. Um, another way to put that is we want to make it as easy as possible for a wide diversity of people to correctly identify and learn basic information about any of the 10,781 plant species. That's as of today, there will be probably more tomorrow in the southeast. Current and constantly updated with the latest warranted taxonomy, completely crosswalk to other floras and monographs, conservation focused. Um, minimizing technical jargon, not dumbed down, just easier to use, visual, visual with photos and maps, and using modern technology, we hope, wisely and well. Um, so um, updatability is, a, is an important uh, concept um, and uh, providing information useful to the biodiversitarian. Um, the keys should be based as much as possible on vegetative features. Uh, when you're out there to survey for a rare plant, um, you can't always afford to be there in the second week of June when it's an optimal um, condition for uh, identification using traditional keys. So we've, um, we're trying to uh, develop uh, a diversity of ways to identify plants. We're developing a traits database uh, that will be useful in a variety of ways and also powers uh, the multiple access keys. Um, we're presenting in our products uh, things like the G ranks and S ranks, uh, wetland status, uh, coefficients of conservatism, um, invasiveness status, heliophily ratings, um, those kinds of uh, information that are useful for the land manager and, um, by, and conservationist. Um, we're working on an ability to create species lists directly out of um, app versions of the flora, which I'll talk about. Um, so um, dichotomous keys, uh, th this gets to the, 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 the more positive side um, of what I presented at the beginning. So we are defiant against uh, the idea that keys are written um, by experts and, and in ways that don't make them um, easy to use by others. Um, we try to design the keys to work as uh, through the growing season, um, relying only as necessary and as late in the key as possible on transitory characters of flower and fruit. Uh, we are trying to minimize that unnecessary technical language. Um, we are trying to juxtapose plants that are similar, even if they're not closely related. In other words, we're trying to write a flora by field botanists for field botanists. Um, we're also um, looking at including um, illustrations uh, directly in the keys, in the, um, particularly in the um, app, uh, the digital versions of the flora. So for instance, in this key to two species of gymnocarpium, uh, the oak fern, sessile basal basoscopic pinule of the proximal penny with basal basoscopic pinulet shorter than the adjacent pinulet versus more or less equal in link to the adjacent pinulet. Um, isn't it way easier just to know that they're talking about the relative size of six and seven? Um, it uh, takes what is almost impossible to understand but for anyone and uh, makes it functional and, um, and workable. Um, how many times I used to want to have a key that separated Solomon seal and Solomon's plume and bellworts and mandarins uh, and twisted stalk 
um, all from one another. They're in different families. So in traditional key writing, they end up uh, far apart from one another, separated by technical characters requiring flowers or fruits. But usually when you see them, they're not in flower or fruit and you still want to identify them. So we're trying to, um, to create those kinds of keys that um, bring these things in juxtaposition. So what, um, what have we been up to? What are we up to? Uh, so a sort of update on the floor of the Southeastern US. Um, the many of you have, uh, your main way you have used it, if you have, um, is through the PDF versions. The, uh, the 2022 edition was released back in April. It had 2022 pages, um, simply by chance. Uh, the 2023 edition uh, we'll, we'll be releasing in April. It will have more than 2,023 pages. Um, we've had over 11,000 uh, downloads and it covers all or part of 25 states. Um, we have uh, been able to work on this through um, a variety of, of funders and collaborators. Um, our primary funding comes from an anonymous conservation philanthropist uh, to whom we are uh, deeply grateful. Um, and he, he basically um, appreciated the idea of, of making biodiversity information more widely available across the region to provide a foundation for conservation action. Uh, but we have collaborations with um, uh, NatureServe and the National Heritage Programs. Uh, we have um, quite a few funding relationships with various National Park Service um, offices. Uh, we have a significant project with the Mount Cuba Center um, the Southeastern Grass Science Initiative, the Flora of Virginia Foundation, um, a variety of state governments, particularly through their uh, natural heritage programs, uh, USDA plants, Flora of North America, and iNaturalist. So um, a lot of, um, we do this with a lot of help. We're able to develop a lot of collaborative uh, projects uh, because of the way the, the, um, the project is structured, which I will uh, now go into. So um, we've been able to hire a, a team of people working on this project. Um, and uh, four of the key people I show here on the upper left, Chris Ludwig, uh, formerly botanist for the uh, Virginia Natural Heritage Program and, and my, uh, my co-author of the Florida of Virginia. In the upper right is Katie Gibson of High Country Apps in Bozeman, Montana, probably the, the world's uh, greatest developer of plant identification apps. Uh, we have a major contract with her working on these projects. In the uh, center, uh, lower center, is Michael Lee, uh, a database scientist um, who helps us make all this work uh, and understands uh, botany as well as databases and uh, also people, uh, a, a key person in the team. And on the lower right is Scott Ward, uh, who we hired away from the Archbold Biological Station in Florida. Um, who's developing a lot of the botanical information. And then of course, in the bottom left, we can't ignore the plants. Uh, that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight species of Rhinchospora, um, all side by side. So we're able to uh, create the products that I, I'll uh, be um, summarizing uh, briefly through uh, managing the flora as a database um, and uh, I expect you to, um, to fully absorb that slide. Uh, this enables us to create uh, flexifloras and floriolets and floriolas for any area or any taxonomic group. Um, we can do things like excluding waifs or graying them out uh, because they're unlikely to be encountered. Uh, we can put maps in or out, pictures or line drawings in or out custom information for a particular area like a park unit or a state, um, as well as um, some of those other pieces of information. So the current way, the way we've mainly delivered the flora in the past is as PDFs. There are 27 different PDFs that are available for download uh, by state, by the full region, by subregions, um, et cetera. Um, but uh, PDFs are not an ideal way to deliver the flora. Um, and so we're increasingly focusing on um, continuing to do the PDFs, but also uh, focusing on uh, producing apps and, uh, and so forth. 
One of those, which is uh, sort of in beta uh, development and currently um, rapidly uh, changing, is the floor of the Southeast web app. And um, anywhere you have internet connection, you can use this. Uh, there is the address. It essentially has all of the information in it that the PDF has, but is easier to use on a mobile device uh, than loading the PDF onto it and having long search times or scrolling or uh, non-adjustment to screen size. So what I'm showing here is the information um, on a desktop, uh, but uh, you can use this on your phone or tablet as well, anywhere where you have internet connection. Uh, there's various modes, uh, color modes and data modes. You can download all the info or you can, um, I'm, or um, I mean, you can use data light where you, it doesn't show the photos automatically if you have spotty cell connection or it can show all photos by uh, default. Um, it had you can enter in the first the two uh, four letter codes for species like C O V E and search um, and it will give you um, the species that either have the two letter genus two letter species or or those uh, or those um, uh, letters in the in the scientific name um, you can click on the species and see an account with the maps and oh my gosh, photos. Um, so we're uh, accumulating about, we have about 150,000 photos for the Southeast that we're uh, curating, uh, accumulating, curating, uh, tagging, et cetera. Um, the keys are there, uh, everything is hyperlinked um, and so forth. So I think this will be popular with a lot of folks who have been using the PDF um, somewhat cumbersomely on uh, mobile devices. We are also, though, developing a uh, the new FloraQuest app, um, and this will replace the old FloraQuest app. Uh, it'll be available on iOS and Android devices. Um, it'll have multiple ID methods. It'll have all the dichotomous keys uh, that you uh, many of you have gotten used to, but it'll also have a graphic or polyclave or flexible entry key. We're looking at interlinking this with iNaturalist, so it'll also have AI as a means of IDing plants as well. Um, one of the really cool things that I'll show you is that uh, uh, once you use the polyclave and get down to a set of species, you can jump to a custom dichotomous key of the remaining species that is created on the fly by the, by the app. Um, and there will be um, uh, photos and so forth. So the graphic key, um, the basic idea here is that you can enter easily observable information about a plant and let the computer do the sorting. You're not directed through a dichotomous key where you may hit a block where you don't have the information needed. So if you enter from a menu that you're in an unglaciated montane Pennsylvania, you're growing, the plant is growing in a wet place, it's a broadleaf woody plant and a shrub rather than a tree, the leaves are opposite and compound, you've gone from over 10,000 possibilities to just two, then you can look at, uh, at images of those two. We have to develop a gigantic traits uh, database in order to uh, power this, uh, which we're doing. So um, I'm gonna show you a few screenshots of what this, um, what this looks like. Um, so um, here's some of the uh, opening screen uh, with uh, general information and, uh, and help information and so forth, uh, like the, the diagram of flower basics, um, a diagram of leaf shapes uh, and definitions and a map of the region. Uh, the first of the apps that we're gonna release will cover this region, including Kentucky, uh, the sort of uh, what we call the Northeast of the Southeast, um, the uh, area from, from Pennsylvania, uh, Virginia and Kentucky northwards. Um, so um, when you have the app installed, you can select the area uh, that uh, it, the keys will uh, be generated for. Uh, so that could be Kentucky, or if you always botanize in Kentucky and Tennessee, you could set it to both of those two states. Um, you also have a choice as to whether to download additional images if you have space on your device. Um, or you can set it more finely um, over here on the right, uh, just to the interior low plateau of Kentucky or the coastal plain of Illinois. Um, the graphic key works this way. You begin, you're, you're directed to a menu which uh, 
which allows you to choose what general group of plants that you're in. So I've selected ferns uh, and then uh, true ferns, not fern allies. And that leads you to a screen where you can cho choose additional information. You can use, choose to use your location, um, their habitat information. You can enter a family or genus if you know what family um, or genus you have in front of you. Um, and then there are characteristics uh, of the plant that are relatively simple to observe. So what I've done here is gone from 60 ferns uh, and entered that the fertile frond is very different from the sterile frond and the dissection of the blade is panatophid. And that takes us to two species. If I click the show button, I get this page which shows Laurenceria areolata uh, or Woodwardia areolata and Anocleus sensibilis. Both are common and uh, it sorts the species by their commonness in the area and gives you the more common species to the top. And then I can, um, I can either look at the thumbnails of these and go to the pages and compare them, or I can click this identify further with our instant key button. And what that does is, is jumps me to a key which juxtaposes Anoclea sensibilis and Laurenceria areolata and gives you the features that will enable you to distinguish between those, um, those two species. There's a ruler on the app which is, uh, um, adjusted to whatever your device is. We'll click up a uh, centimeter ruler if you need to measure something. Um, and then you can go to the species account and see photographs and all the information in the flora, as well as a breadcrumb trail showing you how you got there, what you, um, what you uh, clicked to get there, um, and the range map for the species. So that's the, uh, the app will be released. Uh, the FloraQuest app will be released uh, covering Kentucky um, in May. Um, and then we will proceed through four more apps uh, covering the rest of the Southeast region. So that's, um, I am um, out of time. Uh, so um, I put up some, um, um, addresses and so forth for you. Uh, email me if you have uh, thoughts or ideas. Uh, the web app um, is at that um, web address. Uh, Florida PDF uh, downloads are at that web address. Um, and I'd also encourage uh, the Facebook page uh, at which uh, I post um, uh, fun pictures of about plants and, uh, and also updates on the progress on the flora. Um, so if there's time for any questions, I'll be glad to uh, take them, but uh, thank you for your, for your interest and attention.